Welcome to the Pediatric Review, where I help you prepare for your pediatric nursing exams. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com. Okay, let's talk about hematologic disorders. So the first thing we're going to talk about is sickle cell crisis. So sickled blood cell is the shape of the blood cell. Instead of being a circle like normal, it is sickle shaped, a half moon. So these red blood cells cannot carry oxygen and they clump together due to inadequate oxygen or hydration causing vascular occlusion and this can be very painful. So signs and symptoms include vascular occlusion crisis, so stasis of blood, clumping of cells, ischemia and infarction. You can see fever, painful swelling of hands, feet and, feet and joints, abdominal pain. They can have splenic sequestation, so pooling and clumping of the blood in the spleen. This will show signs of profound anemia, hypovolemia, and shock. They can have hyperhematolytic crisis, so accelerated rate of red blood cell destruction. This can look like anemia, jaundice, and reticulosis, reticulocytosis. They can have aplastic crisis, so diminished production and increased destruction of red blood cells triggered by a viral infection or depletion of folic acid, which leads to anemia and pallor. Our nursing interventions include hydration and adequate blood flow, oral or IV fluids. They may also need electrolyte replacement. They may need supplemental oxygen and blood transfusions. We should promote a position that keeps limbs extended and elevate the head of the bed no more than 30 degrees, avoid pulling, straining, or painful joints. We want to monitor for anemia, decrease perfusion and shock. We want to educate patients on the importance of vaccines and the hereditary aspects of the disease. We do not administer meperidine for pain because of the risk of norepinephrine induced seizures. Then we have iron deficiency anemia. So this is so this is low iron means a low supply of hemoglobin. Signs and symptoms are pale, weakness, fatigue, low hemoglobin and hematocrit, and microcytic and hypochromic red blood cells. Nursing interventions are to increase oral iron intake with iron supplements given between meals with fruit juice for maximum absorption. IM injections of iron using the Z-Track method or IV administration of iron. Teach patients about expected dark stool color and constipation when taking iron supplements. And liquid iron preparation stains the teeth, so we should teach clients to drink with a straw and brush teeth right after. Then we have aplastic anemia. So this is a deficiency of circulating erythrocytes in all other formed elements of the blood due to arrested development in the bone marrow. Signs and symptoms are pancytopenia, which is deficiency of erythrocytes, leukocytes, and thrombocytes, petechiae, purpura, bleeding, pallor, weakness, and fatigue, and tachycardia. Our nursing interventions are to prepare the child for a bone marrow transplant, immunosuppressive medications, colony-stimulating factors to enhance bone marrow production, and they may need a blood transfusion. Then we have hemophilia. This is a blood disorder, X-linked recessive disorder, bleeding due to a deficiency in the coagulation protective hemophilia A due to deficiency in factor eight and hemophilia B due to deficiency in factor nine. Signs and symptoms are abnormal bleeding, epistaxis, joint bleeding, easily bruising, and usually platelet function tests are normal, clotting factor functions may be abnormal. Nursing interventions monitor for bleeding and maintain bleeding precautions, prepare to administer factor VI concentrations, DAVP, synthetic form of vasopressin, which increases plasma factor eight, monitor urine for hematuria, assess neurostatus because they can bleed in, bleed in the brain as well, monitor joint bleeding, control with immuno immobilization, elevation, and apply ice and pressure, and avoid contact sports. Then we have von Willebrand disease. So this is another hereditary bleeding disorder due to a deficiency of or defect in protein termed non willebrand factor. It leads to platelets adhering to damaged endothelium. 
Signs are epistaxis, bleeding gums, easily bruising, and excessive menstrual bleeding. A child with a bleeding disorder needs to wear a medical alert bracelet. That's our kind of big nursing intervention for that. Then we have B thalassemia major. So this is an autosomal recessive disorder characterized by reduced production of one of the globulin change in, chains in the synthesis of hemoglobin, usually people of Mediterranean descent. There are a couple different types. So we have thalassemia minor. This is an asymptomatic silent carrier case. Thalassemia trait, so produces my, mild microcytic anemia. Thalassemia intermedia, this is manifested as splenomagdaly and moderate to severe anemia. And thalassemia major leads to severe anemia called Cooley's anemia and requires a transfusion to support and sustain life. Signs and symptoms are frontal bossing, maxillary prominence, wide set eyes with a flattened nose, green yellow skin tone, severe anemia, microcytic hypochromic red blood cells, and hepatosplenomegaly. Nursing interventions include administering blood transfusions, monitoring for iron overload. The patient may need a splenectomy. Educate the patient and family on the importance of vaccines and provide genetic counseling to patients. If you would like a copy of the study guide, you can find it on my website, blossomwithjessica.com.